The other thing that you don't realize when, when you don't have an electric car is how much you're in chain to these gas stations. When I was driving gas cars, you know, I used to worry about what the price of gas was, whether I could get any, whether I was empty or not. Now, you know, it's, it's really easy because all I do is, is uh, fill up at home. Gasoline is, is, has such a large effect on our daily life and the invisible chain that ties us to that gas pump that gives the people behind the gasoline, the petroleum barons and the auto companies, this immense power over us. And it isn't just the power to order presidents around and the power to move fleets and attack foreign countries you've never heard of before. It's, it's the power to influence you, the power over you. Your daily life is directly tied to that gasoline pump. Mine too. And even though I don't drive a gas car anymore, my fate too is tied to those gasoline pumps because it's, it's the money that comes from all of us that is used to support the oil megalopoly and the foreign oil wars and the clean up the oil spills and destroy the ocean and all the other things that oil does in addition to blasting kids lungs with permanent lung damage from nitric and sulfuric acid. Now there are some of the chargers at the, at the Air Resources Board and, and one of the free rav EVs that they get, which I think they use for air quality, air testing. So all these chargers, you know, formerly were occupied by ED1s and Honda EVs and Ranger EVs and S10Es, but now they're all gone and the Air Quality Management District staff rides around in gas cars, um, some of them being hybrids. And here we see the solar portico. Now this is uh, reserved for the exclusive use of electric cars, but you know it's it's now we call iced. The ICK cars, internal combustion cars, are in there because there basically are no are no electric cars anymore except for the Rav 4EB. Okay, so our final result is 52.5 percent is left. So we used about 35, 36 percent of a charge to come here. Okay, we're ready to go inside now and confront the Air Resources Board, or should I say, uh, honor them with our presence. And, and so you can see the solar panels up there, uh, which is a great, a great installation, really done well. And there's our car. I'm not, I chose not to charge because we still have plenty of charge. We normally do plug in, you know, um, just to show that it's possible. But uh, really, you know, the, what you have to worry about, ironically, in an electric car is overcharging. So I, I, I really have more than enough juice now. And it's better to leave these nickel metal hydride batteries uh, discharged because when they get charged, it's almost like pumping air into a balloon. They're under pressure. And so you, you really want to leave them uh, uh, without the pressure unless you're really going to go someplace. So we only charge it basically to about 80 or 90 percent. Unless we're going somewhere a long distance, then we might charge it to 100 percent and just drive it immediately because if you just let it sit, it doesn't do any good. So there's the hydrogen uh, boondoggle. <laughs> where they actually invested in hydrogen fuel pumps. Now, it's a good part of that is that they, they actually created a good nozzle that actually works. The natural gas nozzles generally are very um, difficult to use. So they actually created a good nozzle for this stupid hydrogen, but of course nobody can use it. I was out there looking at it and, and talking with the managers. He said, yeah, it's good, he said, but it costs us $18 a gallon, the equivalent to use this stuff, whereas natural gas is $2.79. So if you can't bring the cost of technical grade hydrogen down, you know, below $18 a gallon, I don't think it's going to have a very, <laughs> very, very wide usage. You know, and there we see, you know, this, this hydrogen. Now, after four years after the Air Resources Board killed electric cars in favor of fuel cell cars, there's less than 100 fuel cell cars on the road in California. Now, don't forget, there were like 3,000 uh, zero emission vehicle battery cars. And we see these empty things here. There are no fuel, hydrogen fuel cell cars, essentially. You know, they're very, very rare. There's hardly any on the road because they just don't work. It's a stupid idea. You'd see fuel cells in stationary applications before you saw them in 10,000 PSI uh, uh, cars. So uh, basically we've gone backwards. You know, the, the cars, the zero emission vehicle cars that were on the road are gone and they're replaced by nothing. There's just, you know, those stupid hydrogen fuel stations at $18 a gallon that use cars that cost a million dollars and they can never get any cheaper than that. And the Air Resources Board, uh, you know, basically made several steps backward. Now there's one RAV4EV, you know, that's the only zero emission vehicle car here. 
You know, and CNG makes sense. So, you know, basically that we're led by the realities of the laws of nature to say, well, you know, natural gas is, makes more sense than fuel cells. And eventually they're going to have to, you know, acknowledge that, you know, the fuel cell thing is a big boondoggle. So here we are in the Evil Air Resources Board. And we'll see what, what they have to say inside.